Well, good morning and welcome to Alpha 19, seven days to die in my test world. And here to my left, you see a test I was running the other day. In this video, however, I'm going to concentrate on some issues that will affect my current playthrough where I'm focusing on a stealth character using knife and bow. Now, these weapons have some particular peculiarities and also some buffs in Alpha 19 that need to be understood if you're going to play this sort of character. Now let's start by considering the types of zombie you're likely to encounter early game. Here you see the uh, crawler and he's got 80 health, 80 hit points. You can see I'm in god mode so that you can see the hit points. Then you have the basic female zombies which have 125 hit points and the low level male zombies which have 150 including things like the utility worker though this is a bit tougher because he's also armoured. Same with things like the biker and soldier. Then we have uh, Mo here with 250. I see I've already been experimenting on him. And the top level basic zombies, which have 300 hit points, so they're a lot tougher to deal with. So let's start here with a level one primitive bow, which is what you'll have at the beginning of the game with stone arrows. And you can see it has 19 base damage. Let's check it out here. 125 to 106, yes, that's 19. And if she'll just stay still for a headshot, we get double that damage at 38. Now it's just worth noting that on an armoured zombie here, you'll notice we see you only get 15 damage for the basic versus 19 here. So that's the effect there of reduced damage from the armour, which you need to take into account. Now let's look at the sneak damage, which is where the bows had a buff in Alpha 19. Here you have a bonus damage of 200% on sneak damage if you can hit the target. Easier when they're asleep. Now that means that even a primitive level 1 bow can one shot these basic zombies. However, it doesn't quite one shot the male zombies. As you can see, it's left him with 18 health. Still fine that we can then finish him off with a single shot afterwards. With iron arrows though, or a slightly higher tier bow, uh, you'll be fine also with these basic male zombies. Now let's look at the knife. We'll start with a level 1 bone shiv, which has 5 base damage versus 13 for a club. However, the knife carries with it a dot bonus, that is damage over time bonus, in the form of bleed damage. So let's hit this target and see what we get. 5 damage initially and start at 198 and you can see we're progressing down. And there we seem to have stopped at 174. Well, that gives a total damage of 24 for the knife with a single hit of which 19 is the bleed damage over time. Try power attack. That does 20 initial damage. Why am I not showing her damage? Hang on. Oh, here we go. And let's see where we finally get to. So it looks like that stopped at 244, which gives us 36 bleed damage on top of the base 20. I think that extra bleed damage is because the power attack inflicts two bleed wounds and any hit that you do afterwards refreshes those bleed wounds. They don't actually stack, but they refresh the damage from those bleed wounds. Now let's try putting some points in the skill tree and see where we can get to with the uh, knives later on in terms of increased bleed damage, because what you'll see is that the deep cuts perk, where is it? there it is, actually increases the number of bleed wounds you can inflict simultaneously and the number that you inflict with a single power attack. So let's try a power attack with these maxed out settings with a level one bone shiv. Obviously, by the time you have max settings, you probably won't have a level one bone shiv. You'll notice the, because of the boost to the basic agility perk, I did a higher initial damage. And we start at 174 and let's see where we get to 59. So that, if my mass is correct, is 135 damage from a single power attack with a level one 
bone shiv. The other thing to note about the knives is that they don't use much stamina. So let's see what we can do with a level three knife. And by the uh, so these real power attacks. Yep, that does the job. Now I've spawned in a feral Hawaiian and a top tier machete. One, two, three, four, and he's down, even without the prolonged bleeding effect. So even end game, it's not an ineffective weapon. That said, 2,000 hit points, I maybe wouldn't want to take on a zombie bear with just the knife, at least certainly not in a situation as I'm now with no armour. Because, yeah, you just don't want to wait for that bleed damage take effect. That said, there is a 400% sneak damage bonus on a knife, so if you can sneak up on a, a bear, you will do a lot of damage. Perhaps that's something I'll leave you to try at home. Oh, turn the AI back on, and I'm glad I'm in God mode. But what about zombie dogs, the bane of the early game? So now let's go back to our early game. Level 1 Shiv. Admittedly, I've got perks, but I don't have any armor at all. I'll spawn in a load of zombie dogs and see how I get on. Wish me luck. Back off a bit, re enable the AI. Here we can see the I'm getting hit, but the benefit of the bleed damage and the fact that they're slowed down and the fact that my stamina holds up reasonably well. So, yes, I'm going to say I had a, a bandage to hand and survived that little encounter. Now if you want to follow along with how I get on playing my playthrough using predominantly the agility tree and knife and bow, then that series I think is going to be called Abhorson. So I'll see you there.